Hey guys, in this video I want to talk about how you should use your smoke when you're holding the A site on Mirage. There are three main ways, so let's get started. Now the first and most basic way to use the smoke is at the start of the round. Using this smoke early gives you time to set up however you wish by helping deny the early ramp progression. And as well, if you have an SMG like an MP9 that Kenny S has right here, using the smoke at the start of the round gives you time to move up closer to the choke point, which then plays to the strength of the SMGs where you want to use them close up. Another great time to actually use your smoke at the start of the round is if you're going to be playing solo at the start. So here we're going to see that Keto, he's going to throw that smoke at the start of the round. That's because his teammates are going to be focusing more towards holding and fighting towards middle, while he's going to be alone towards this bomb site. And in this time, you don't actually want to be pushed or aggressed on by the cheese, so that's why you want to throw that smoke there to prevent that kind of aggression. Now alternatively, you may want to use the standard smoke at the start of the round as a way to actually control a ramp after it fades. So here we're going to see Estag, he's going to throw that smoke at the entrance of ramp, and him and Floppy are going to get closer. And as Floppy gets close towards the smoke, you're going to see that he's going to put himself inside the smoke. And the reason why you want to do this is because when the smoke fades, the player inside the smoke will see the player outside the smoke more clearly first. So as the smoke fades, you're going to see he's going to clear out this A ramp area. Then he's going to have a bit of a setup with S tag. And right here we're going to see that S tag is actually going to set up a flash room to peek towards the bottom of ramp. So there's the flash, and it allows Floppy to peek towards the bottom of ramp and take down Alexi B. Alternatively, you can use a flash when the smoke starts to get closer to the time that it expires. Here we see RPK waiting directly behind the smoke. He's waiting for the right timing where he's going to call the flash from shocks at ticket booth. He's going to call for it just a bit before the smoke starts to fade, and with this flash we see him get two kills on players waiting behind the smoke. Now the timing of this is the most important thing. You want to time it so that it's near the end of the smoke's lifespan, because that's the most likely time where the T's are actually going to be playing behind it because they want to do something after the smoke fades. Now as smokes are longer than molotovs, there's actually the option to chain a molotov with the smoke towards a ramp to allow a play to develop. So right here we see Ken Yes, he's going to go for a palace pick. Next up, he's just going to smoke ramp like so after the molotov. And basically this buys him a little bit more time before somebody can actually come out of a ramp to allow this palace pick to develop. There's actually another smoke that you can use at the start of the round. So rather than smoking the entrance of ramp, you can actually throw a deeper smoke that lands at the bottom of ramp. This combined with the Molotov is a very easy way to allow you to take a ramp control right at the start of the round. So here you can see that Keto, after throwing that smoke, he basically doesn't have to worry about anybody swinging out from the bottom of ramp, he only needs to clear the flower pot. And after he clears the flower pot, he basically has deep A ramp control. Now one of the main reasons to actually throw this deep ramp smoke at the start of the round is to force the T's to respect the fact that you could actually be controlling ramp. Here at this point G2, they realize that Big have taken A ramp control, and they don't know what kind of setup they could be running. And because of this, by the time they actually do their execute, they are forced to use the flash to actually clear the A ramp area just in case somebody's playing close. This can act as a way for you to figure out if the T's are actually going to be coming up towards ramp. Another thing that this nade set can do for you is to help you fake aggression. So here we can see JKS is going to throw that same nade set, so the deep ramp smoke as well as the molotov, but he's not actually going to peak the bottom of ramp. Instead he's just going to stay A more solo, while the rest of his team are in a 3 man mid setup. Now what could actually happen here as a result is that the T's, they may actually see this nade set over towards this ramp area, and tell their teammates that the CT's are aggressing ramp. That would be a cue for them to tell their mid players to try to speed up their mid aggression, and that's when this 3 man mid setup would actually come into effect. Now the second main way to use the smoke is to actually use it more reactively. Here we see Twist, after he gets his kill onto Flame, he's going to drop the smoke over by default, and he's going to use this as a one way to catch T's who are crossing over towards Tetris. Now the key idea here is that you want to use it more reactively, so after contact is made, Here's another example, so RPK is going to get this first kill into config, he's going to drop the smoke over by default, so not only does the smoke act as a one way, but can also cancel molotovs. And by using smokes more reactively, this is the best way to ensure that your smoke will actually be effective. So unlike throwing the smoke at the start of the round, you actually have the opportunity to use these smokes because generally you're using it when the T's are actually trying to hit your bomb site. In particular to this smoke, not only is this smoke a great one way, it's also a great smoke to prevent yourself from being traded by the palace player. Another great benefit to using your smoke more reactively is that it actually buys your teammates so much time on the rotation. So right here we're going to see that Boomish is going to find this first kill, he's going to drop the smoke right in front of him, and because of that it makes it so difficult for the T's to trade him out. 
This has bought his teammates so much time to actually rotate in towards the A site. Now if we look at this from the T side point of view, you're going to see that after first contact is made, Perfecto is going to start rotating over from B. He's the B anchor player here. After the smoke is dropped, you're going to see that Zaiwu and the rest of Vitality they have such a hard time trying to find Boomich in the smoke. Then you're going to see that they've barely advanced towards the site by the time Perfecto's already made it through CT spawn. So another way to use your smoke more reactively, especially if you're playing close up A ramp, is to simply jiggle peek with the smoke. And basically as soon as any pressure or contact is made, you drop the smoke. So right here we're going to see that Floppy, as soon as OG start to throw their A exec smokes, he's going to drop that smoke at the bottom of ramp. And what this effectively does is it forces the T's to actually use a flash if they plan to actually push through. Now you don't have to use the smoke that aggressively. You can also just drop it at the entrance like Broland does here. So once again, OG, they're going to throw the A smokes, and he's simply just going to drop the smoke at the entrance. And what this also allows you to do is it allows you to peek more towards Palace. So this is a bit more of a flexible smoke that you can use where you can kind of manage both entrances. Now if you're not a fan of jiggling, you can simply just hold this pixel crack like this. And then as soon as pressure or contact is made, you can simply just drop the smoke. Now something that Boomish does here is actually pretty smart. He's actually going to drop the smoke, but he's going to drop it a little bit further back so that it actually creates a gap towards ramp. This is going to bait the T into peeking, thinking that he's dropping the smoke to cover the entire entrance. And you're going to see that from Nas' point of view, as soon as the smoke is dropped, he falls for the bait and he gets taken down. Now here's another trick you can use. You can also smoke the bottom of ramp like so. And if you do it properly, you can actually use it as a one way to swap T's who are standing on top of the ledge. And just to illustrate, this is what it looks like from the CT's point of view. And then the T's point of view. The CT has a lot easier time being able to spot the T than the other way around. Now generally, Ticket Booth is a very common spot. So a reactive smoke that you can throw from here is just in front of Triple like so. And when you throw the smoke, it basically covers you from Palace, allowing you to reposition onto a new angle towards ramp. This entire time when Kenny S peeks over from Triple, he's covered from Palace. And as well, you can use the smoke as a little bit of a one-way if you decide to jump on top of the ticket booth. Here's another example. So right here we're going to see Henny is going to feel a lot of pressure from this A push. He's going to take a couple shots here before he throws the smoke. After he misses this shot right here, you're going to see he's going to drop that smoke just in front of triple. He's going to Molotov towards default. And you don't always have to cross over towards the left. You can also go over towards the right to give yourself another angle onto players who might be standing over towards that Tetris side. The third main way to use your smoke is to actually extinguish the Molotov in the position that you're in. So right here we see that next day he's going to extinguish that Molotov under towards balcony and because of that he's able to maintain his position here. By smoking the Molotov, you're giving yourself more time to stay alive and you're also buying more time for your teammates to have opportunities to be able to help you. In addition, the T has to worry about you staying alive here the entire time. If you look at this from Inter's point of view, after he throws this Molotov, and after the smoke extinguishes it, now he has to worry about somebody playing under balcony the entire time. As he's trying to scale up towards this bench side, he's trying to manage his angles as much as possible, knowing that that player could peek. Now what this means is that you could even just smoke a Molotov just to create the illusion that somebody is there, and then use that to punish the T's. So don't be afraid to use your smoke for the Molotov, either to stay alive or to create the illusion that somebody's actually there. Now for this last part of the video, I want to talk a little bit about the strengths and weaknesses of using some of these smokes. If you use your smoke at the start of the round to deny early aggression, it means you don't have any smokes to delay when the actual hit comes through. You might find yourself in East of the situation here where a default smoke would be great for staying alive during this hit. And if you've used your smoke already and you play a spot like under balcony, you have nothing to be able to counter the T's Molotov. Now if you don't use your smoke at the start of the round and instead try to save it for the actual hit, you run the risk that the T's push you immediately without giving you a chance to even use it. So it's important that you mix up how you use your smoke. You don't want the T's to start predicting how you're using your smoke because then they're going to start countering the way that you use your smoke. For example, if you always smoke default on contact, they may just push you in the time that you're spending to drop the smoke to be able to set up the one way. And if you're playing towards ticket booth and you're always using the triple smoke, they may just double nade you after taking contact. And finally, if you always smoke the Molotov, they may just bait your smoke out with the Molotov earlier in the round and leave you with no smoke when the actual hit comes in. 
So really, it doesn't matter which one of these you use, it's more important that your opponents can't predict how you use your smoke throughout the entire half, as a combination of these smokes is the most effective way to hold the A bomb site on Mirage. That's gonna be it. Thank you for watching. If you guys liked what you saw, please drop a like, subscribe, hit the notification bell for my future content. I've also started streaming on Twitch, so feel free to follow me there. Thanks again, I'll see you guys in the next one.